On this week's World of Saltwater Fishing, we're back off Key West in the Florida Keys. I'll be with Pepe Gonzalez, and we're northbound into the Gulf of Mexico to try our hand fishing behind the shrimp boats. You ready for the gaff? Yep. Right there, ready for you. Yeah, baby. On the wrecks. Oh, it's oh, a cobia. cobia. Another cobia. And at the towers. Oh. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. He ate it right of the boat, George. It's one exciting episode you don't want to miss. Stay tuned. <laughs> for almost world of saltwater fishing celebrating 21 years of fishing television excellence big fish don't stand a chance key west of the entire florida keys chain is known for its vast variety of fishing opportunities you have virtually everything here from the flats all the way to the wrecks out west and north in the gulf and the atlantic side reefs wrecks and of course the offshore fishing this time i teamed up with captain pepe gonzalez and our goal was to run north into the Gulf to try our hand at late season action behind the shrimp boats on some of the wrecks. It was gonna be a Gulf of Mexico adventure and I was very much looking forward to fishing with Pepe and exploring all the opportunities out here. So uh, initially when we planned the show, we, one of our target species was the black fin tunas. We wanted to do the black fin tunas behind the shrimp boats. Uh, usually, the black fin tunas is something that we do more in May, April, April, May, or somewhere around there. Even though we would be late behind the power curve for one particular species of fish, we know that we can make up for it based on the vast opportunities that we had on towers and wrecks. Uh, once you go out that far, you know, we can end up going uh, 50, 60 miles out for the shrimp boats then it opens up a whole different uh, possibilities for the wrecks. It was a beautiful weather day, fantastic Florida Keys tourism ordered. Pepe and I took off in the open gulf, ran around 38, 40 miles. We started picking up the uh, shrimp boats on the Simrad Halo 4 radar. So we found one that just was in the process of finishing up and there was activity behind the boat. Uh, talk to me, Pepe. How so, you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm not sure really what I got here. It's a little bit late in the year for the black fins, but you never know. This could be one. The way he's fighting, he's, he's going down sounding, so it's a, it's a positive sign. Oh, I just felt the tail like a tuna. <laughs> Doing a good job on that 12-pound line. Oh, yeah. That's how I like it. I like a challenge. I'll grab a gaff soon here if it looks like the right flavor. You're gaining now pretty good, aren't you? Yeah, I hope something's not behind them, you know what I'm saying? And when you see these shrimp boats just like peel out of the area, more towards the your latter part of summer, mid summer? Yeah, but really it's all fishing related. Oh yeah, we got us, we got us a big bonita. <laughs> all right. So naturally the bonita were stacked up. So Pepe and I had the light pen spin tackle and just decided to have fun with it. And these were the large bonita, these 15, 18 pound fish. When you hook them up on 10 pound and even 20 pound class braid tackle, it's just a great wide open fight. Got to free line it a little bit. Yeah, baby. I see color here. What kind of color are you seeing there, George? Feel, just faint at this point. I can't tell. Oh, oh. oh I got me one of them little, them little sharkies. Yeah, baby. Got my hook back. Once in a while, you get to get your hook back. Uh, I'm gonna come down for this guy. You ready for the gaff? Yep. Right there, ready for you. So the bonitas, I mean, giant bonitas, two dinosaur bonitas. So you can get as many as you as you want, really, out there. And they're great baits. Uh, it's just so much fun to be uh, uh, behind the shrimp boats. George Boat for Almost World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Penn, let the battle begin. Mako, you'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine, go boldly. We'll be right back. Key West in the Florida Keys offers a wealth of light tackle fishing opportunities. 
We're in the Gulf of Mexico, north of Key West, bird dogging shrimp boats and dropping on wrecks. I'm with Captain Pepe Gonzalez. We bounced around a couple different shrimp boats, pretty much the same routine, all the bonita that you wanted in a light tackle. So Pepe said, let's go ahead and change gears. I have a lot of wrecks in these areas. Let's try our hand at, at anchoring at some of the wrecks. We were going on a westbound, and we tried to hit every wreck that was there in that area. A lot of the wrecks had so much action. There were so many jacks. This big giant uh, jack crevallis, they're, they're so uh, ferocious the way they feed that it was hard to get anything else. Yeah, baby. Come on, Pepe. Uh, that looks so good, I, I think I'm gonna get the landing net ready for this. Not like heading west down here in the Florida Keys, George. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. How far up the bottom do you have him? Oh, I got him up pretty good, I think. Right, cool. he's oh! oh, no, he's still there. Yeah, he's still there. I thought for a second he came up on me. He shook his head, and I yeah. thought I left. Heck of a fight, Pepe. Heck hey, I had a guess at this stage. What do you think you have? I'd have to go with a black or some type of grouper. Yeah? But you know, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely dogged down a lot. Yeah. I, I got him about halfway up and now he's giving up. You know, that's a telltale sign of either a nice grouper or a nice big snapper because he's giving up now, thank God. Mom couldn't take it anymore. Oh, come on, who are you for? Well, you know, George, I take people fishing every day. <laughs> you but I don't do the catching. <laughs> Here we come. He definitely got some shine to it, so it's a strange one. It's big, whatever it is. It's a big old big jack. Big jack This is. I just got oh, my I... butt kicked by a jack. Come on. Here it is. There we go. It's a big jack, Ooh, though. I'll tell you what. Man, what a nice fish, huh? That gave me a workout. Yes, it did. Peppy hooks up, brings up a jack Ravel, And then I get hooked up. Turns out it's a jack Ravel. Peppy hooks up and fights a shark. And I'm working a jig, and I end up foul hooking a jack Ravel. So this one particular wreck, for as rich as it looked, the fish were not in a feeding mood. So Peppy, he likes this expression called stop and shop. We're gonna run to some more wrecks, but first, we're gonna hit this big tower. So these towers are all over the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can imagine, it's like an oil rig. It's this giant tower with legs that goes all the way down to the bottom that creates great artificial reef. How's the fish marking? Uh, fish between 60 and 70 feet down, pretty solid. There could be anything around this, from cobia, could be Goliath groupers. Anything could be around the, this particular tower. Oh, yeah, baby. <phone rings> ate it out of the boat. I just teased it, the boat, and he ate it. He ate it right out of the boat, George. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, oh, yeah. The particular barracuda on this tower, you know, got my attention. These were some nice sized fish. Look at that, I got three or four of them following them up. That, yeah, they're going up. They're, now, you would think that these barracuda that show up are just dumb. They're gonna eat anything that you throw back there. But in reality, those large barracuda are some of the most intelligent fish. They lay back. If you hook up with a decent sized fish, be it a snapper or something, they'll come in and nail half of it, if not take the entire thing. So they're there for you to work to catch fish for them, basically. There you go. I'm good. Check this. You need a hand there? Yeah, I'm, I made for this guy. We hooked a, a barracuda, super fat, and uh, it's a pretty amazing catch. It had a giant circle hook in its mouth. He actually, I think he's got a big uh, hook on the other side of his mouth for somebody else. Somebody was probably trying to target a, a Goliath grouper at the bottom, and they put a big jack on it for bait or something, and the barracuda ended up eating it. All right, let's take that. Woo, you can smell that barracuda smell. Here, let me take that rod from you Thank so you, you don't have to worry about this. Watch. Uh, that's out. Now, let me do his other side. Look, there's a... If I can help I didn't out. know you were a dentist. My dad was. <laughs> I got the circle. It's the, it, there he is. Okay, he's going overboard. Check it? this. Okay, Cody, you're going back in, buddy. Probably somebody trying to catch a Goliath, you know what I mean? They put, put a blue runner or something down there. All right. Look at that baby. Woo! Big, look at, check this good hook job, though. Good job. But what, this is the pressing part. Where was it? Right here. He had that so embedded in its jaw. Ah, at least you feel good. You did something good for the fish. Yeah. I was outside to catch him. If you want to take a day off from fishing, 
or you're down here just playing tourist and you want to take in the sights, one major attraction here is the Papa's Pilar Rum Distillery in downtown Key West. Papa's Pilar Rum is tied in heavily to the Hemingway Foundation. In fact, when you go into the distillery, they give you the entire history of Ernest Hemingway and his time down here in Key West. And it talks about what makes this rum special. It talks about all the procedures involved in the ingredients to make their rum. And if you really boil it down beyond that, Hemingway was in the service. So all the Pilar rum bottles are in the form of a canteen and the lid resembles a compass. Other highlights, naturally if you're on the Hemingway subject, go see the Hemingway house. You can see where Ernest Hemingway actually lived and wrote a number of his books. And also the six-toed cats that are fable <laughs> live here too. Uh, you could go down to Wall Street, numerous restaurants and bars to keep you entertained. And of course, the world famous sunset at Mallory Square. It is amazing to see some of the most beautiful sunsets that you'll ever, ever want to see setting west to Key West in the fabulous Florida Keys. Make it a point to take a break and just explore and absorb Key West proper. It's really an amazing city. There's nothing like that out there. George Pogorola's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by Simrad, the new Simrad NSS Evo 3S chart plotter. The best just got better. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. Starbright Book Care Products, blending technology and performance since 1973. We'll be right back. The Gulf of Mexico, north of Key West and the Florida Keys, holds numerous wrecks and even some unique structures, all of which gather fish. I'm out here with Captain Pepe Gonzalez. What we were dropping on the bottom and anything else was not happening for us. So I decided I'm gonna take advantage of what's here and these were the barracudas. I'll get them around the top like these, so nobody gets hurt. Oh, look at the size of that. And even though we came this particular tower, we didn't get the species that we were looking for, but we did come away with more action in terms of one big trophy barracuda and two others that really weren't all that small. Uh, yeah, a little bit, but, I, but don't, don't no, trust him. I don't trust him. Either. Don't trust him. Let's he's, get him in the water. He's, he's going over. Me, he's giving me the stink eye, George. There he goes. So Pepe scored a nice size lane snapper from this spot, and I hooked a uh, barracuda on a pinfish, which pulled the hooks alongside of the boat. So Pepe said, you know what? It's time to go shopping again, so let's go. He said, we're going to leave the tower and stop at a particular wreck. We go to this wreck, and like the others, you're marking fish on it. But it was a very slow pick. Whatever reason, it, it, we were really working to catch fish in this particular outing. Cobia. Cobia. A little cobia. I think the I got the net. Are cobia. Fish. All right. You got Where's your net? Right, right there. Yep. Here's our cob. Well, I get a thump on the bottom rod, and I've got a decent fish, and it's running off. Totally different fight. Then I noticed the line starting to track up towards the surface. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, hopefully it's a cobia. Okay. Beautiful. All right, that's nice. Set him down. We got him in green, didn't we? Yeah. All right. I don't think you knew what happened, George. No, he didn't in that time, which is sort of good in a way. Come on, guy. We're going to let you eat out. Let's do it easy, the easy way. Here we go. And one cobia goes back. They're real bigger. Thank you. Well, George, there's one good thing about that. I like to think that when you find one cobia, there's more. All right. I'm holding you to it. Another cobia, another cobia. Another cobia. Oh, oh a big giant cuda under back. him, too. How about the, a little net action for me, please? Yes, sir. That cuda wants him, too. I don't want him to get speared in half by this big. Look at it. Look, look, he's going to go for him. Oh, here, bring it, bring it over here, and then I'll deal right. with that in a little bit. All right, I can. <laughs> bring it in, ask questions later, okay. right? And it was—it must have been a nice school of, of cobias there, because it, it was non-stop. And actually, I spoke to people that were at that same location, uh, even a couple weeks after we were there, and the, the schools of cobias stuck there for a while. And the next one goes over.
Georgia's Tackle Locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. OLA stands for Overboard Location Alert System, and it's the centerpiece of ACR's next generation engine kill switch and crew tracking technology. ACR's OLAS Guardian is a wireless engine kill switch and alarm which, when integrated with ACR's wearable crew trackers, acts as a virtual safety tether for helmsmen and crew. It's the perfect addition to keep your family, friends, and even your pets safer while out on the water. Here's how it works. Much like a watch, an ACR OLAS tag is worn by each crew member. The OLAS Guardian monitors up to 15 of these MOB or Man Overboard tags, which you can customize and manage through the mobile app. Should any connected crew member fall overboard, the OLAS Guardian will sound a highly audible alarm. Additionally, your mobile phone or tablet also sounds a highly audible alarm while displaying the GPS coordinates, bearing, and distance back to the location of the man overboard incident, enabling the helmsman to circle back for a quicker rescue. OLAS Guardian solo mode is highly suggested for those who boat alone. Should the helmsman fall overboard, the boat's engine power will be killed within two seconds. Furthermore, the GPS coordinates of the man overboard incident will be automatically texted to the emergency contact the owner has listed in the app should they remain separated from the boat, helping to assist in a rescue. So, stay safe out there knowing that you've got a guardian, the oldest guardian from ACR. Mercury Performance Stats, Key West, Florida Keys, Power, Triple Mercury Verado 400 Horsepower Outboards, Speed, 47 miles per hour, Total Miles, 164, Total fuel burn, 178 gallons. George Pope Robles World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly being brought to you by the Florida Keys and Key West. Visit flakeys.com. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum. Order yours today at papaspilar.com. Float On, the original aluminum immersible boat trailer. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Our base of operation in this particular trip was the Perry Hotel on Stock Island. A favorite of mine when I'm down this far in the Florida Keys chain. It's a more of a secluded, quiet area, contemporary resort, and has all the amenities that you could expect from a four-star resort. A couple of pools, they have a poolside bar and grill, and they have a very good restaurant located upstairs in the Perry Hotel, Matstock Island. Matstock Island is known for its quality food, be it steaks or seafood. The rooms were beautifully appointed. The other big plus is the marina, which is downstairs, the Stock Island Marina Village. A 288 slips, it's the deepest water marina in the entire Florida Keys. Just a great combination between the Perry Hotel and the Stock Island Marina Village. So I guess the humorous part about this cobia bite that we we're into, it happened to Pepe twice. He hooks up. It's a decent fish. Is it? Yeah. All right. Thinking he is a cobia, and I'm thinking so too because I'm catching them. And on two instances where he thought they were cobia, it turns out to be sharks. What is it? Shark. Shark. Man, I, it really didn't feel like a shark. And you can just see the disappointment in his face, and I can only imagine what he was thinking uh, when his cobia turns into a shark. But uh, he released the two sharks, went back down, and uh, kept in the game. He, you know, he did get himself a cobia. Oh, it's oh, a cobia. cobia, another cobia. And a big wave jumping. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's almost guaranteed that if you're fishing the Gulf wrecks that you're gonna be getting into the sharks. Sometimes when we start getting real thick into the sharks, it's time to go. Look, look out to see if you see a big one come I, up. I'm gonna watch it. too. Oh, there's an, oh no, there's a barracuda trying to. Yeah, okay, I'll we'll catch you on this side here. Yeah. Return your favor. There you have it. There's your cobia. Little summertime cobia action yes. in the wrecks. My trip with Pepe Gonzalez really emphasizes the fishing opportunities that you have off Key West and the Florida Keys in that there's so many opportunities to catch fish that rarely do you need to come back to the dock with a skunk in the boat. There you go. I'm, I'm liking it. I've got to tell you, I was happy with the fish catching. Could have been better? Absolutely. Could have been a lot worse? Absolutely. But we kept the rods bending. I've uh, grown up 
watching George on TV, so it was a, it was a, a big deal for me to be out there with him. And uh, he's got an incredible work ethic. There's no, there's no short days if you go fishing with George. George will put in 12 hour days, no problem. And I was very impressed by everything. He's a great person, great fisherman, and he does not give up. All in all, it was a perfect trip with Pepe Gonzalez off Key West in the Florida Keys. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.